Hello everyone. Welcome to my series of lessons on the physics of sailing. My name is Owen Smith and I've been a Sail Canada certified cruising instructor since 1999. My degree is engineering physics from the University of BC. But now I'm retired and I've been instructing the Sail Canada cruising courses for Cooper Boating in Vancouver since about 2004. My first series of lessons are on the physics of sailing, because if we understand the physics of what we're doing, we'll understand how and why we trim our sails the way we do and how to handle our boat properly. Okay, in this first lesson, I'm not actually going to talk about sailing at all. In this lesson, I want to introduce a subject that I'll be using in these lessons, and that is how to add and subtract arrows. Hmm, add and subtract arrows, what's that? Well, mathematicians and pilots like to call them vectors. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Well, vectors are just arrows, so I may say arrows or I may say vectors throughout these lessons, but I mean the same thing. But I call them arrows because they have both a size and a direction, and that's what's important about them. Now, many of you may already be quite familiar with this subject, but not necessarily everyone. So this lesson is for anyone who might need a refresher. In these lessons, I'll be using a lot of wind vectors and force vectors, so you need to be comfortable with how to add and subtract them. But I'll try to make this quick and painless. I'll start out here with an example that I know you can relate to. Let's say you're about to swim across this river. And suppose the river is one mile wide. And suppose you can swim at one mile per hour. So, of course, it'll take you an hour to get across. This arrow, vector A, represents your speed through the water and the direction you're swimming. It has a length of one mile per hour. Yes, that's right. We can use the length of the arrow to represent your speed because it's the distance you'll travel in an hour. Now, it's a river, so you know you're going to get carried downstream as you swim across. Let's say the river is also flowing at one mile per hour. Here, vector B represents the speed of the river, because it's the distance you'll be carried in the downstream direction in your one hour of swimming. But of course, it's pointing in a different direction. It's pointing in the direction of the flow of the river. So here's where the addition of arrows comes in. You can determine your actual speed over the ground and where you'll end up on the opposite shore by adding these two arrows together. And you add them together head to tail, like this. And the result is vector C, which is your actual path over the ground. And to calculate your speed over the ground, we could just take a ruler and directly measure the length of vector C, because it is the actual distance that you will have traveled over the ground in your one hour of swimming. Now you'll notice that I've put a little half arrow over the top of each of these vectors, A, B, and C. That's to indicate they're vectors, not numbers. So if I write a vector equation like this, vector A plus vector B equals vector C, it doesn't mean the lengths of vectors A and B add up to the length of vector C. To find the length of vector C, you need to measure its length directly. In this particular example, it's a right triangle, so we can just use Pythagoras theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So C is the square root of two, which is one decimal four one four. So you actually traveled 1.414 miles over the ground in the one hour. So your speed over the ground was 1.414 miles per hour. And in this case, in a direction of 45 degrees from your swimming path through the water. Keep that in mind. Vector A is your speed and direction through the water. If you were in the middle of some very large river, you might not even know you were drifting downstream. Okay, so that's how we added two vectors together. But when you're adding vectors, it doesn't matter what order you add them in. We can move the vectors around to change the order. And as long as you add them together head to tail, you'll always get the right answer. So here I've just moved the vectors around to change their order. Clearly, A plus B equals B plus A. And this just shows we get the same answer C. And we can also add any number of vectors together this way. And they don't have to be at right angles either. If you're in a sailboat, vector S1 represents your speed and direction through the water. You might also be fighting a current of speed S2 in a slightly different direction. 
But further, your boat may also be slipping slightly downwind at a speed S3. So you can add all these vectors together to find your total resultant speed, which is a vector SR, which is your speed and direction over the ground. Once again, we could add these vectors together in any order, all head to tail, and the resultant vector starts at the beginning of the first vector and ends at the end of the last vector. Now, sometimes we need to subtract vectors. Suppose, for example, I know I can swim at one mile per hour, but maybe I don't know how fast the river is flowing, and I'd like to find that out. Of course, I could just drop a float in the water and measure its speed, but you can't always do that. And the purpose of this example is to show how to subtract vectors. So let's take a look at that. So here, as before, vector A represents my swimming speed through the water. And let's say that after one hour of swimming, I end up at the end of this arrow C. Then to calculate the speed of the river B, if A plus B equals C, then B equals C minus A. But how do you subtract a vector? What is the negative of a vector? Well, the negative of anything is what you have to add to it to get zero. So the negative of vector A must be the same vector, but pointing in the opposite direction. So that when you add the two together, you get zero, which means you're back at your starting point. So this is negative A. And then C plus negative A, and again, add them together head to tail, equals B. So to determine the speed of the river in this example, we subtracted vector A from vector C to get vector B. Okay, there's one more vector manipulation I need to show you that will come in handy in some future lessons. And that is, sometimes you may want to study the effects of a vector. To do that, you can break it up into component vectors that add together to produce the vector, and then study those components individually. Looking down on this sailboat, we can see the vector representing the force in the sail caused by the wind. We can separate this vector into two components too, one in the boat's forward direction and one to the side. The keel will eliminate most of the sideways motion of the boat downwind, while the forward component of the force vector is the quantity of force propelling your boat forward. Separating the wind force into these sideways and forward components will come in very handy later in my lesson on the efficiency of the different points of sail. You can probably already infer from this diagram why a close reach or a beam reach may be a faster point of sail than a close haul, because on a close haul like this, most of the wind force is trying to push the boat sideways, and there's only a small component of force available to push the boat forward. And that's also why your boat will heel over a lot farther on a close haul because of the large sideways force. Okay, so that's the end of this lesson. I hope that was all clear. But Adding and subtracting vectors will also become useful in my lessons on navigation. Before we end here, we should take a quick look at how. Let's say you've taken compass sightings, and this is your fix at 10 a.m. Then you point your boat to 300 degrees magnetic, and your knot meter indicates you are sailing at 6 knots. Then you note on your chart your estimated position at 10.30 a.m. to be 3 nautical miles along your course. But at 10.30, you take another set of compass sightings and plot them on your chart and note this is your new fix. So this is just like swimming in the river. Here, vector A is your speed and direction through the water. Vector C is where you ended up after 30 minutes. So vector C minus vector A will be vector B. Now, I didn't bother to do the vector subtraction it's obvious that we can just add vector B to vector A to get vector C. We call vector A the set and vector B the drift. Vector B is the current taking you off course. So for your next leg, you will correct your course to account for the drift in order to get to your next destination. But you'll have to wait for my series of lessons on navigation to see how to take into account the drift on your next leg. Okay, in my next lesson, I'll be using vectors to explain how the wind drives a boat forward. That's really the physics of sailing. In aviation, it's called lift. But if you think you're already familiar with that subject, I encourage you to watch the next lesson anyway. It may not be what you're expecting.